CES is always both part inspiration and part motivation, right? So the inspiration and the opportunity actually to see what are the next products, what are the next opportunities, what are the things that consumers will love that we can start to align with and understand what those behaviors might be and what the potential ad models are. And then the motivation part ties into, it's a start of 2017, we're there with all of our clients and top marketers, how can we start to lay out a roadmap for activation for the year ahead? And often in all the things that we talk about, at the end of the day, what we hope to do is get closer to how can we make this real? How can we make this meaningful? How can we understand what the business impacts are? So Amanda, let's talk a little bit about television and video, and you've been uh, at the forefront for a number of years, and uh, things only get more interesting. Yes. Um, in terms of the opportunities for brands, um, you know, it's many things. We've talked about content marketing and the new fronts for years, and now, uh, there's opportunities in all kinds of uh, new platforms and Facebook and Snapchat and so on. Um, just give us an overview, if you will, for clients who are looking at this new world of television and video, what are some of the things that you're excited for them to be involved with or that you'd like to uh, have them learn about or perhaps embrace? The, I mean, the landscape of video is like, it's a conference more than a question, right? <laughs> there is so much that's happened in the last decade now that we're into this transformation. The shift from linear TV into online video, to mobile, to over the top, to connected, the different ways of measurement, the different ad formats, um, all of that is creating a lot of complexity in our ecosystem, and yet there's some simplicity that agencies can bring to this as well to really distill down what are the opportunities and how do we understand performance and how can brands activate in this. And it still comes down to kind of the tried and true, how are brands able to now connect and tell stories better? Because now that we have more platforms, more content than ever, more choices that consumers have than ever, we're also getting more signals than ever from consumers to understand how they're watching, what they're watching, on which platform. And all that boils up to the ability for marketers to now stitch together their stories, sequenced in a different way, customized with more precision around the actual audiences versus mass segments, and also with more predictability from the learnings that we might glean from digital that we can now apply into television through their indexed and optimization products. So it's creating tremendous amount of choice and complexity, and yet because of the data telling the truth and being hopefully closer to a single source of truth as measurement evolves, we can start to put together a much richer, more engaging, more relevant value between marketers and their customers. We've been speaking a lot about addressable and you know one-to-one -one with digital that we've talked about for many years, yes. and now it's becoming more of a reality for TV. Uh, at least through some of the cable operators, some of, some of the satellite operators. We hear a lot about what is going on with AT&T and DISH and others. What are the opportunities to deliver on a one-to-one -one basis um, an advertiser's message and what are those opportunities? It's great to see addressable now being more broadly defined, whereas it used to be all about addressable TV, household level precision through a few cable operators. Now we think that topic of addressable has gotten much broader as we talk about digital video in all formats and the opportunities through programmatic to get much more precise on identifying audiences, understanding them and targeting them across platforms as well. So today, as you talk about addressable, that can certainly be to the degree of how do we find a very narrow segment online? What can we learn about that segment? What new audiences and targets might we discover that we can then try to bring into television in the rudimentary form, the starting points, which can often be just looking at networks and understanding more indexing of that audience and finding them across maybe a different swath of networks than we would have thought. Ultimately, more of that inventory is being made available programmatically, so we can actually bring our data to get very precise in those audiences, um, at least online, and now start to look at how can that impact addressable TV as well when it comes to understanding segments that we want to then invest further into. So there's a ton of opportunities, as, as long as we aren't having our mindset just around it being addressable TV, but addressable in totality and also understanding and reapplying that in the planning process, not just as a point of intersecting and finding and delivering from a reporting mechanism. How we, is that a constant loop of addressability? And, and we hear a lot about that from some innovative programmers from Fox, from NBC, we've been hearing Absolutely. about that. The Where networks have really stepped up the plate in this last couple of years, and so they continue to refine the product with Publicis Media input, hopefully, to shape that according to our clients' needs. So I don't know if there'll be an upfront. I mean, they ov obviously there will be an upfront, but I guess the question is how much of this sort of data-driven 
planning will change the upfront as a uh, change the marketplace perhaps in the next year or if it will right it's interesting I mean, the upfront isn't dead those have been headlines for some time it is a point of time when agencies and clients have more leverage and more dollars to bring to the party to make their asks available but it's not strictly limited to that may june time frame certainly and now with more availability of data and understanding our ability to see what works and continue to optimize against that and have better flexibility and moving our dollars across networks, across media organization, definitely becomes more real. And you do start to see the networks reacting to that, not only with developing products, but also different ways of working and increasingly being more flexible to understanding what is the performance that they are driving for the marketers. How can they do more of that? And in what pockets of networks or opportunities in digital or television can they meet those needs?